Hey guys, my name is Calvin Newman. I'm the owner and founder of MoCAD Adjusters. You know, if you found your way to this video, that means you either A, are looking at getting into a, a new career and one of independent adjusting, or you found that it's hard to find information on this career that you've heard about. You know, and that's my goal during this video here. It's just to kind of lay out exactly what an independent adjuster is, what we do, how we get paid, and maybe help you make a decision of, is the adjuster career for you? So let's jump right into this. And you can see on the screen right here, this is what I would call Mr. Webster's definition of an independent adjuster. This is the formal definition. But essentially what an independent adjuster is, is a third party contractor that works on behalf of the insurance company. And we have many different jobs and, and responsibilities that are out there. But here's what the definition itself is. We are a third party contractor that works on behalf of the insurance carrier and our sole purpose is to identify, investigate, and document covered damage. Before we do a deep dive into the job itself as an independent adjuster, let's look at what the primary duties that we have as independent adjusters. And here they are on the screen. You can see right here, three primary functions. The first one being investigate. You know, it's our job to investigate storms, investigate damage, investigate insurance policies. So investigate itself is a huge part of our role. We are essentially investigators on a very large spectrum. The next item on this list is identify. You know, we are the professionals on the site. We are considered the subject matter experts when it comes to identifying and properly identifying covered damages as it relates to the insurance policy or identifying damage that it has been caused that may or may not be covered by the policy. The third thing here is document. You know, we as adjusters have to document anything and everything that we do in our career. And that goes from when we speak to someone or when we take a picture or when we're out uh, investigating the damage, we have to document anything and everything. You know, the old saying, if it's not documented, it didn't happen. That's so very true in our career. So again, as you take a look at the three primary duties as an adjuster, it's investigate, identify, and document storm damage. So now that we've taken a look at what an independent adjuster is and the primary duties of an adjuster, I wanna tell you that one of the best things that I like about this industry and about this career field is that there are many different ways to work in this career field. And by that, I mean, you can work auto claims, you can work uh, shipping claims, you can work property claims, you can work workman's comp claims, just all kinds, I mean, just think about all the different types of insurance claims that are out there. And every one of those claims needs an adjuster. I'd like to take a minute here and just kind of zero into uh, one particular adjuster, which is probably the, the career field that most of us are going to choose, and that's a property adjuster. So if we take a look at this slide right here, again, there are many types of career paths this career path right here specifically is the property. And what I'd like you to pay attention to is the two blocks right here. Essentially, we have catastrophe and non-catastrophe. And you can look inside the non-catastrophe side here in parentheses, I've got the word daily. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute. But let's go back over to the catastrophe side here. And you can see underneath the property adjuster and underneath the catastrophe side of an adjuster, we essentially have two different types, a field adjuster and a desk or otherwise known as an inside adjuster. This is what most folks get into, and this is where what most folks consider to be where the money is at. But I want you to think of a catastrophe as a natural disaster. I want you to think of it as a uh, hurricane or as a very large hailstorm or something along those lines. So as a field adjuster working catastrophe, that is someone who actually goes out to the property, who actually goes down to Florida to work hurricane claims or goes to New Orleans to work hurricane claims or comes to the Midwest to work hailstorms and things of that nature. The desk and the inside adjuster, that's someone inside an office or back at home in their home office working. And we work hand in hand as field and desk adjusters. We work side by side with each other. And not everybody has to pick and choose. Well, I only want to be a field adjuster or I only want to be a desk adjuster. You can flip flop back and forth. I say this often. Some of the best field adjusters that I've met came from working inside or at the desk. So the big difference between catastrophe and non-catastrophe or daily claims 
It's just that it's a large catastrophe. You know, we like to say there's a disaster a day. And so that's what this non catastrophe or daily adjuster is. It's an adjuster that is dealing with your everyday run of the mill claims, such as burst water pipes, leaky uh, windows, uh, things of that nature, things that don't require a very large disaster. And if you look on the inside of that, you also have your field adjuster as well as your desk and your inside adjuster. So just to sum this slide up here, on the property side of an adjuster, you've got catastrophe and non catastrophe or daily adjusters. And within both of those categories, you have an adjuster that will go out to the field and inspect someone who is physically going out to the property to inspect, or you may have a desk adjuster or an inside adjuster, and that is someone who is working from their home office or maybe from a corporate headquarters. So how do we get work as independent adjusters? You know, a few slides back, I talked about being an independent contractor working on behalf of the insurance company. Well, let's take a look at how we get work because that's not the easiest thing in the world to do. And if you don't navigate these waters properly, you can find yourself drowning in, in areas that you shouldn't be drowning in in this career. So let's take a look at the slide. If you pay attention to the graphic here on the left, the little golden ring, so to speak there, that's essentially the flow of how we work. An insurance company gets the claims, they assign it to an IA firm. Now listen, I know that that's a new term for us and we'll talk about an IA firm here in just a minute. But the claim is assigned to an IA firm. The IA firm assigns the claim to us as independent adjusters and we go out and look, there it is again, identify, investigate and document. We go out and we do those things and then there it is, we get paid. If it was that easy, everybody would do it. And listen, now's a good time for me to tell you that this career is not easy, but I promise you it will be worth it. You know, 60% of new adjusters fail, six, zero, more than half. And here's the reason why. Most of these new adjusters coming in are ill-trained or they have mismanaged expectations. And what do I mean by ill-trained? Listen, the reality is this is a profession OK, we, you can't make the kind of money that we make as independent adjusters without a proper education or without proper training and a proper background. And just having a construction background, many folks think that that's going to cut it for them. And quite honestly, that's not the reality. So just getting work itself can be challenging in this career if you're not properly trained and if you don't have your expectations managed. You also need to make sure that you have connections, because at some point in time throughout your career, it's going to become more about who you know and relying on your own reputation than what you know. So let's go back and we talked about that IA firm. That was a new term that we used. An IA firm is an independent adjusting firm. So they're kind of the buffer, they're kind of the, the glue between us as independent adjusters and the insurance companies. What's important to know about the IA firms is there are more than 500 of them out there. And if you think for just a minute, that's encouraging. There are more than 500 employers out there looking to hire us as independent adjusters. The next bullet point there is you must be properly trained and qualified. And I talked about that just a little bit, but it's so much more than having a license. Yes, we need to have a license. You must be licensed. There are some states in our country that don't require a license, but I'm telling you, you're looking at getting into insurance adjusting. That's the third largest business on the planet. So just having a license is not going to get it. You've got to have some carrier specific training. And what do I mean by that? A lot of these insurance companies want you to be specifically trained for the way that they do things. And every insurance company does things different than the next. So there's a, a, quite a few insurance companies out there that will require some specific training to their company. Industry specific training. What I'm talking about here is inside of our industry, there's several different ways to work. I, I discussed that a little bit earlier. And just a few things just to kind of get your wheel spinning of what I mean here. Working flood claims is different than working hail claims. Therefore, flood claims require specific training and a specific type of training. Uh, sometimes you may walk out to a house and it's a two-story house or it's got a steep roof or something like that. Those are all very specific types of training inside of our industries. And you've got to be qualified for a very specific type of claim. 
Exactimate instability. There's another new word, or maybe you've heard of that already. But exactimate instability, these are the two computer-based programs that we as adjusters use to write our estimates. Now, between the two, exactimate and stability, exactimate is a much more common platform. Some 95% of all claims are written utilizing the exactimate software. Exactimate is a very large and very robust computer-based program that is used to write the estimates. You must be proficient. Now listen, you don't have to have a certification for Xactimate or Simbility. In fact, Simbility doesn't even have a certification. Xactimate has three levels of certification. You don't have to have a certification inside of these platforms in order to get work. But as a new adjuster, you want to be certified in these things. That way, you're setting yourself apart from your peers. So we talked earlier about this being a profession. Go ahead and start getting it into your mind right now that that's what this is. You know, too often I see folks wondering about this career or trying to get into this career and they want to treat this like a hobby. Listen, you don't live the lifestyle and you don't make the kind of money that we as independent adjusters make by treating this as if it were a hobby. This is a profession and you need to take it serious. And that being said, I want to introduce you to a patent pending process that we at MoCAT have established. And what this is, is called the four core competencies. Now, if you take a look here, the four core competencies are this circle here in the middle, starting with policy, claim management, scoping, estimatics. And so what we've found is that these are the four core competencies that a professional adjuster must master in order to be successful and in order to perform at a high level inside of this industry. So let's do a deep dive into each one of these competencies. Here, if we take a look at policy, now listen, knowing and understanding insurance policy front and back is crucial. It is absolutely critical. Everything we do as insurance adjusters revolves around that insurance policy. So often I hear people say, well, I've got my license. And yes, that's true. You studied some policy while you were getting your license. However, you didn't study enough policy. Trust me, I've taken a lot of these policy exams and very few of them actually teach policy. They really and truly are teaching you just to get your license. So knowing and understanding policy is absolutely critical. And there's a reason why we place it at the top of the spectrum here. Everything starts with policy. Moving on to claim management. This is where I see many, many, many adjusters fail. Understanding and knowing what to do with that claim once you have received it is so crucial. It's so critical. And many folks have absolutely no idea, especially those folks that I see getting into this career with just a license. They've got a license. They don't know anything about policy. And now they have claims thrown in their inbox and they don't even know where to start. So understanding how to manage your day-to-day -day operations and how to work very methodical. Listen, this career is amazing. You're going to hear me say that throughout the rest of this video. It is absolutely amazing. I think it's America's best kept secret. But if you are not disciplined in your craft and in your skill, and if you're not professional, you will never make it past the second core competency of claim management. It's so important that you know how to manage your day-to-day -day operations. Let's take a look at scoping. Scoping is the process of identifying, investigating, and documenting. Now, if we think back a few slides ago, that's exactly what our job is. But scoping is the actual physical hands-on process of identifying, investigating, and documenting. And scoping can be done in the field or at the desk. Now, I hear this often, but Calvin, I don't have any construction background. There's no way I can be an adjuster. Listen, quite honestly, Having a construction background is good, but it's not a necessity. We as independent adjusters speak a different dialect of the English language. And the cool thing is, without having a construction background, coming in with the proper education, you can be taught the right dialect of construction terms that we as adjusters use because it's different than a regular contractor. So not having a construction background should not eliminate you from this career. And finally, let's take a look at estimatics. Estimatics is the process of packaging all of it up together, of 
putting the entire claim together and writing the estimate. And we talked a little bit about Xactimate and Symbility. Those are the two largest platforms that you will write an estimate in. It's very important. Again, I said earlier, you don't have to have an Xactimate certificate, but 95% of all claims are written in Xactimate. Go get some Xactimate training. This is where you're going to spend the majority of your time is inside of your computer writing that estimate. Professional people are going to get professional certificates and getting an Xactimate certificate or getting some ability trained is only going to make you that much better at your craft. You know, one of the cool things about this industry is the ease of entry. You know, you might go to college for four years and spend over $100,000 just on an education in hopes that you stick with that uh, major or you stick with that career field or whatever it might be. But at that point in time, you're in debt. You spent over $100,000 trying to get that education in a career field that you may or may not work in. As an adjuster, let's take a look here. The average professional adjuster training costs between two and $4,000 as opposed to that $100,000 of debt, massive debt that is an option for you to get. Let's take a look at the pay down here in the bottom left corner of pay of these college degrees. You know, the, the highest earning income degrees right here, we're looking at engineering, just under $70,000. Computer science, that's a massive major or a massive degree that you can get. The average income for that is $67,000. Math and science is 62, and there you can see business at 57. So those are the types of degrees that you can get, but it costs you more to get that degree than it does your annual salary. Let's take a look again over here. I said it earlier, the average professional adjuster training cost is between two and $4,000 to enter into our career field. Independent adjuster pay, now this is according to ZipRecruiter, $105,000 is a national average income for an independent adjuster. So the cool thing about that income right there, guys, is the average adjuster only works six to nine months out of the year. And that's by choice. You know, not all the time are we out running claims or, or whatever. We've, we've essentially hit our financial goals for the year and maybe we'll wanna put our feet up for a little bit. But the average adjuster makes over $100,000 in six to nine months compared to that just below $70,000 four-year degree uh, education. So it's super exciting the quality of life that you can have as an independent adjuster, but you've got to be disciplined and you've got to treat this like a profession. So it's been my goal at the beginning of this to kind of shed some light and maybe educate you on this amazing career that you've heard of or this amazing career that you're trying to get into and why MOCAT. You know, we are the country's premier adjusting school. Everybody in our organization is an independent adjuster. We have lived the lifestyle that you are either struggling to live as a new adjuster or wanting to live as a new adjuster. We're recognized as the industry leader in adjusters training. We are an all-inclusive, hands-on training facility. We're affiliated with some of the largest IA firms in the industry. Our alumni have priority with many of these employers out there. Quite often, I have employers call and say, I want to hire MOCAT alumni before I hire anybody else. And one of the cool things about MOCAT is we don't want to just train you. We want to share our professional connections with you. Like I said before, we're an all-inclusive adjuster training facility. We are a licensed provider for the Texas All Lines license. We're hands-on, real-world, and up-to-date with our training. And that's super important because our industry is changing. Sometimes it feels like it changes every minute of the day. So having trainers that can train you based off of current Industry standards is so key to your success. You know, here at MOCAT, we pride ourselves in having one of only 50 Xactimate certified trainers. There's only 50 people on the globe that are certified through Xactimate to train their program. And we're so fortunate to have Ms. Jessica Rivera here at MOCAT to train you in the proper ways of writing an estimate inside of Xactimate. This next one is, a, is something that is near and dear to my heart, which is world-class mentorship. You know, we don't just want you to come to MOCAT, get some training and go out the door and we're done with you. You know, we, we want to do live weekly coaching calls with you. We call them Mentor Mondays. We have our own private app 
where we can all come together and converse and talk about what's going on and get some coaching and some training to further our careers. Inside of those coaching calls, we bring in, often we bring in uh, leaders from the IA firms and leaders throughout the industry to talk about job opportunities or changes inside of our industry or additional training opportunities. We want to share our personal connections with industry leaders. You know, as a MoCAD alumni, you open yourself up to so many discounts throughout the industry. Discounts such as Xactimate testing, Haig, NACA, rope and harness training, licensing, and there's many, many more. And finally, our MoCAD community. You know, we here at MoCAD, we pride ourselves in creating a community where adjusters help adjusters. You know, back in the olden day, when the adjuster career field was extremely small, it was not uncommon for adjusters to collaborate with each other. Well, that's something that we've brought back to the industry, and we're very proud of that. You know, we're, we're creating a community of, of adjusters, and right now it's over 500 alumni to where when you're out there and you're working as an independent adjuster, because it's just that, it's independent, it's alone, you are expected to come into this industry and know exactly everything that you are supposed to do. Well, it's independent adjusting until it's not. And it's not when you're a MoCAD alumni. There's over 500 alumni that you can reach out to for advice, to include our staff. Networking with leading adjusters at your fingertips. That's what I'm talking about right there. When you find yourself out running claims and, and maybe you come across something that you're unsure of or unaware of what to do, or maybe you're trying to decide what career path you should take. The networking and the community inside of MoCAT is world-class and it's top-notch. We are all here to help you succeed and help you get the right foot in the right door. And finally, we're a family here at MoCAT. It's so much more than just getting you in our doors, training you and letting you go and never talking to you again. You know, it's independent adjusting until it's not, like I said. And our goal here is to create a culture of adjusters helping adjusters. And that's exactly what we want to do. We want to help folks get into this amazing career. You found your way to this video. I'm here to tell you, in all honesty, this is America's best kept secret. This is an amazing career if you're disciplined, if you're properly trained, and if you're a professional. Listen, I hope you found this video to be helpful. I hope it educated you a little bit more. And if there's anything that we can do, reach out to us. Give us a call. Reach out to us on social media. We'd love to see if we're a good fit to help mentor you along this journey of your new adjusting career.